Okay, Sheen had the hots for Carl. Moving on. There's a reason that I was so dour on Nickelodeon when I started this review show, and Planet Sheen is one of those reasons why. Let me get this out of the way right off the bat. Planet Sheen is not the worst Nicktoon ever. It's definitely better than some of the ones coming up. It's just, why? Why does Planet Sheen exist? Like I said, I really liked Jimmy Neutron, but was it really clamoring for a spin-off? You know, years after the original show had ended? Actually, the show's history is probably more interesting than the show itself, and it kind of showcases how insane Nickelodeon was at the time. Planet Sheen actually wasn't designed to be a Jimmy Neutron spin-off at first. The show was originally envisioned as Red Acres. It was originally about a fast food worker being sent into outer space, and it would have been slightly original. I guess. I'm guessing that the network didn't want Mr. Meaty in space, so they rejected it. However, they did decide to make the guy's show on one condition. Abandon his idea completely and go with Nickelodeon's idea, where Sheen steals one of Jimmy's rockets. I like chicken, I like pants, but I don't like chicken in my pants, chicken in my pants, chicken in my pants! Fuck it, J.N. Jimmy Neutron, someone named J.N. is putting all these notes in your lab. Do not push this button, J.N. Don't push this button. Oops! I didn't do it! This has absolutely nothing to do with the original premise. There was actually a kind of back and forth behind the scenes. You see, the executives didn't want Carl in the show at all. They just wanted to follow Sheen. So the producers had a brilliant idea. Take an alien that looks and acts exactly like Carl Weezer in every single way and have him be a character in the show. I'm kidding if you couldn't tell. There were no brilliant ideas behind this show, but I was serious about everything else. That is why there's a Carl Weezer snot alien in the show. Planet Sheen follows the titular character from Jimmy Neutron as he hijacks a rocket and crash lands on the planet Xenu, destroying Squidward's house. Now, in an episode of Jimmy Neutron, Jimmy would have realized that his rocket was stolen, and Sheen would have been brought back to Retroville within 22 minutes. But this time around, Sheen was left for 26 episodes. I can only imagine that Jimmy was tired of his friend's idiocy, and decided that this time around, just fuck him. If Sheen can't find his way back after making a mess for the hundredth time, he deserves whatever the hell is coming to him. Believe it or not, the premise of the show is actually really hard to accept. A random kid stranded on an alien planet is definitely not a new idea, but like I said about Jimmy Neutron, New Ideas was never the franchise's strong suit. Jimmy Neutron's strength was in its characters and how they dealt with the old ideas, and character is not something the planet Sheen really understands. It's telling that this show was not made by the same production crew. The only returning contributors were basically the voice actors. I will say with Sheen, they did mostly get his characterization right. He acts a lot like he did in Jimmy Neutron, and that's a problem here. With characters like Sheen or Mater, you know, the characters that end up being really popular because they're weird or stupid or charming or whatever, they're kind of like candy. Having a little candy is a sweet treat. Having too much candy, you will die of diabetes. And shows like this is the animation equivalent of dying of diabetes. The other characters are all disappointingly one note. You got the generic love interest action girl. You have the incompetent ruler. You have the unattractive girl that's really attracted to our main lead. These are archetypes that have been done to death on Nickelodeon now. That last one, the unattractive girl that's really attracted to our main lead, it's basically just another form of 2D from Fairly Odd Parents in 2001. The emperor on this show doesn't give me anything more than Aladdin Sultan did back in 1992. The neighbor who wants to destroy our main character is the only character who makes an impact, and it's definitely not from the writing. As written, he's basically a more homicidal Squidward, always upstaged by the naive idiot and watches his life crumble to nothing for no reason, and as a karma magnet where nothing ever works out for him. The only thing that makes him interesting is the voice acting. It's Jeff Bennett doing a Tim Curry impression, but honestly, I had to look that up. It's a damn good impression, and it really helps make his character memorable. He is the only character from the show that I liked, and when the villain is the most likable character on the show, that's usually a problem. Snot Carl Weezer doesn't even have the charm that he used to. He is kind of neurotic, I guess, like in the original, but in all honesty, his resemblance to the original Carl Weezer is really superficial. There's also a chimpanzee named Nesbeth who is an interesting character, but the world shits on him more often than not. I can't say that this show never got a laugh out of me, which puts it higher than shows like The Mighty Bee or even Fanboy and Chum Chum, but this show has a fundamental problem. It likes to take a joke and run it into the ground. <laughs> There are moments and jokes in this show that I did find funny here and there, but whenever that happens, they just drag those jokes along, never knowing when to really end it. Or they'll turn them into running gags that don't change throughout the episode. It kind of makes me feel annoyed at laughing in the first place. 
As far as alien planets go, Xenu is really bland. And by the way, I don't know if they knew that they named that planet after a major figure in Scientology. I really hope not. Xenu as a planet is really boring. There doesn't seem to be an overall direction of what the planet actually is. It's just weird for the sake of being weird. All the alien inhabitants act like your typical aliens that you'd see in one episode of another show. And there is way too much purple. Everything in the show is fucking purple. Purple. Either purple, green, or brown. The color palette in this show is awful. Bartle Entertainment could learn a thing or two about color palettes because this one makes the show a visual bore. This is one of the most boring looking alien planets that I have ever seen. You know, when something like real world Mars looks more vibrant than your show, you've got a problem. And it's a shame too, because otherwise the animation is greatly improved from Jimmy Neutron. The characters and the models are all much cleaner and the movements are far less stiff. It still has issues with liquid, but the lighting engine is really improved. How shadows are cast on the characters can be kind of impressive. Although I wouldn't blame you for not noticing because once again, everything is either purple or green. The plot lines fall into two categories. Categories. They're either too cliche or too bizarre. I reviewed an episode way back when, Is This Cute? In that episode, Sheen had to impress an alien destroyer that turned out to be a rainbow pony that sucked characters into its nose with extending nose hairs. I'd like to say that those kind of episodes are the exception. The other type of episode amounts to this. Alien has never heard of Earth Concept. Sheen teaches Earth Concept to Alien, badly, from world records to the holiday season. You will see this plotline over and over again. That'd be absolutely fine if we hadn't seen something similar in literally every other Nicktoon that had aliens in it. At times it feels like this show knows that it's being too cliche and it starts throwing in random nonsense to try and fix it, leading to some pretty annoying stylistic decisions. Ever so often Sheen will be in a scene transition doing a monkey dance. Other times we get a Family Guy style cut away to a random thing that Sheen was talking about. These don't work, and they often come across as desperate for a laugh. It really feels like the show is made without any idea of what to do with it. It feels very much like Nick wanted to push forward a popular character as much as possible, without thinking of how, what, or why. And as a result, we get a very stilted, cliche, and nonsensical mishmash of ideas that were never really panned out. The theme song is pretty accurate to what the show is, if you can believe it. Random nonsense that does not go together. I can't say that this Nick tune is the worst ever. I can think of at least five Nicktoons that I consider worse off the top of my head. I suppose on some level I would call it overhated, but that doesn't mean that it's good because I don't see any value in this one. These ideas have been done better before in better cartoons. If you want some Sheen humor, watch more Jimmy Neutron. At best, this show is a waste of your time. Talk tough. I smell cheese. There's definitely cheese nearby. Add tough. Oh, what does this button do? And get tough. Uh That's what I'm talking about. It's Tough Puppy. High five! The new series about the secret agents that love to fight like cats and dogs. My claws are registered as lethal weapons. Maybe you should register your breath! Don't miss Tough Puppy, Saturday at 9.30, right after Planet Sheep on Nicktoons. We're secret agents, butt munch. 